If you're unfamiliar, like brand boards, what does this even refer to? Usually this is like brand guidelines. Uh, this is pretty common in the design space. Uh, sometimes PR firms kind of get into stuff like this, especially as a company gets larger, typically. You wanna have consistent design decisions. Usually that's where it's interpreted, from consistent design decisions. So you know, here's the fonts that we use, here's the colors that we use, here's the logos that we use. But I see this is where it's going, is it's gonna, become one of the building blocks to really expedite your funnel building, your email building, any sort of those digital asset building, and as well as having like a common space of anchored decisions. You change your logo, and now imagine how easy it is to rebrand. Do, 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 high level hot takes. <laughs> we need a theme song. That's exactly right. Okay. We've got a, uh, I mean, there's always a ton of releases. I love High Level does their release radar. This is not intended to be a release radar. This is more of my hot take about the releases or about what's going on with the product and uh, what I'm excited about. And uh, I don't know, just a little bit more. Of what I love about what you share here is it's not just here's the release. It's here's how you use this in the business. Here's how this can become a selling point. High Level does do a good job of updating. Here's the tech. Uh, but you always create a good bridge into it and what to do with it. So hopefully I continue to do that today. Okay, so we're talking new release, totally brand new feature that is part of a bigger play that I see happening. That's why I thought it'd be an interesting topic of conversation. So brand boards is now a possibility. You can find this. You can go into settings of a sub account or you can go in the marketing tab over on the you know right hand side of the like top sub menu to marketing. It's called brand boards. If you're unfamiliar, like brand boards, what does this even refer to? Usually this is like brand guidelines. Uh, this is pretty common in the design space. Uh, sometimes PR firms kind of get into stuff like this. As Especially as a company gets larger, typically, you want to have consistent design decisions. Usually that's where it's interpreted, from consistent design decisions. So you know, here's the fonts that we use, here's the colors that we use, here's the logos that we use. Here's the logo that we use when it's a dark color background. Here's the logo that we use when it's a light color back background. And so this is as I mentioned, more common in larger companies because they just face the issue more when there's more people potentially creating assets for the business. That being said, here's why I think this is interesting and why High Level did it and where I see it kind of going. So it allows you, well, let's talk about it a little bit and then I'll tell you why I think it's interesting where they're going. So you can create from like a blank. So if you say, I, I just want to start from scratch, I'm creating a, a blank brand board. You can have two logos. I think out of the box, they were interpreting more like if you wanted a horizontal version of the logo or a vertical version of the logo, if you had like maybe icon left, TypeScript on the right, or icon on the top, TypeScript on the bottom, um, you can have two brand colors and you can have two uh, typography decisions here. So that's right now out of the box. Will they add more? Yes, inevitably they'll add more. They also actually do allow you to do more than one color there. Uh, you need to have at least two. And I don't think there's uh, a reasonable or unreasonable limit. Same thing with fonts. Uh, fonts, you can go up to five. Colors, uh, uh, you can go up to 10. <laughs> 10 colors, five fonts, and uh, two logos. You can put all of these materials together and it creates a brand, a brand board. You can save this brand board. This is helpful if you're running actually multiple brands in a sub account. That's cool. You can have multiple brand boards. It's nice. Like I said, when you're bigger organizationally, you just sort of have it. But let's talk into like the use case of where does this play into. So now having the brand board allows you to reference these materials across all sorts of properties. So you'd be like, what do you mean by that? Well, let's go emails, funnels, websites. I'm trying to think if there's any other places, but like places where you're creating stuff that is visible to the customer, wherever that might be. It's it's not across everything, like I, but I see this playing across everything as it goes out. So now I'd be like, review campaigns. Well, so now there's no point in having to set an independent review logo because you have the brand saved there. And so similar to what custom values do, where you can change it in one place and it applies in many places, that's what brand boards allow you to do. You have a uh, common starting point, it's known, it's defined, and you've got a basis to build from. All these decisions are already decided for you. Now, here's where I think this is going and what I see this building towards. Because as I mentioned, the most common use case for brand boards is when you have multiple team members, which is usually in larger organizations where it's unknown. If you got a team of one, it's not always critical to have a brand board because it's like, you know, 
You've got the logo saved on your account. You've art, you've memorized the three hex codes that are your color. You're the only person building anything. And so the chances that you're going to make a mistake, not very likely. Now you might say it would be nice if I had one place to manage it. So then as I make a change to my brand, it auto applies in all of these places. That's very nice. Yeah, that'd be a, that'd be a value add. So that's one side of it. Um, however, I think the bigger play here is laying the foundation for what AI can do in your marketing suite. So we've seen this in other tool examples. Uh, I mentioned it on a past show, maybe maybe on other podcasts. If you haven't checked them out yet, it's it's uh, brandblast.ai. And I loved one of the things they did is they had. Um, call it brand context. Now they, they went beyond just brand board. You you like out of the box, yeah, you got logos and colors there, but they'll say like language, avatar, you know, types of customers that you're trying to serve. You could upload a PDF, you could upload thousands of words um, to give context before the creative. And that's what allows them to then say, like, hey, go make social media posts for me and generate really remarkably effective creative because there was a ton of context going into it. I could see high level anticipating a future where the more we have these sort of like common assets, guidelines, the more we can now leverage AI to accomplish some of these things. So now if I said AI, build me a funnel, it's not just like, uh, let me use a generic funnel, like whatever it is. Now you can sort of imagine if you had a template that's say whatever, a lead magnet funnel, it's got your brand guidelines. Maybe in the future it has you know, maybe the brand board expands to these other more text-based information, sort of context around your avatar, your desired, uh, you know, some key characteristics of your brand, you know, the key problems you want to solve, all that sort of stuff. You could wrap that into it, save it in one place. So then you could have the magical experience of like a one-click build me a funnel. Uh, and, and maybe it's like build me a funnel for a webinar that's going to be teaching my customers how to put a chat widget on their website and they have all of this context, all the colors, all the logos, all the fonts, as well as it knows who are your customers. It knows the pains they experience. Chances that it's not only gonna build a, a funnel that's beautiful and matches your brand, but also maybe even has great copy, that's super exciting stuff. And so I see this as high level, maybe one of the first bricks into a big initiative that I think we'll probably see fully realized in 2025 is what I'd call. I know there's some big releases coming in end of 2024. So I do think we'll we'll see it teased out in 2024. But 2025, I think it's going to be a crazy uh, new reality of the leverage you can get in one place. That is, it's possible right now, but you have to go to multiple different places. Yeah. And think of like, this is what high level has done all along is they've said like, oh, it's nice when you've got five different tools and you kind of glue them all together. Maybe they all work fine, but you're gluing them all together. When we start to put them in one place, you get to, you can actually accomplish more faster because it's in one place Yeah. because you're not having to, you know, check for context over there to get it over here. Like you can, you just do more granular stuff. And that's what we see like now, because calendars are in the same place as all of like the nurture and automation if if someone no shows an appointment, you can auto text them. Whereas like if you're using Calendly and someone no shows you, Calendly is like, we did our job. Like we got the appointment. There's nothing we do if they no show you. Whereas this can be like, oh, put them back into a nurture sequence. Keep on reminding them to reschedule whatever it might be. And so I see the same thing happening here with brand assets. This is the first one, brand boards that are around design assets. And so this is one I think we'll continue to see uh, expand out. But there's no downside. Like, go get this configured, put it in your accounts, and then the more places that it starts to have interaction and have feel, the more leverage you're going to get. And I think, like I said, end of 2024, early into 2025, we're going to see this and maybe some other initiatives just make a huge difference between just leverage. Like, it's yeah. what AI does, right? Replacing a lot of people side of it. And so it's like, even like great teams are able to do it because you have to give them these brand boards or these consistent assets. Now, if they're documented in a more digital place, because typically like a brand board, you put all the guidelines on it. It's literally a PDF for your team. And maybe there's like two files for like the logo, but they literally just see on the PDF or the Canva doc, it says like, this is the hex code for the color. They have to go and type in the hex code if they're using it. With AI, it's like it's decided, it's set here. It's like, oh, I have all the information I need. The ability to turn out remarkably effective, I'd say, marketing assets in a short amount of time is going to be 
mind blowing just because yeah. all these things are going to be in one place. So that's that's brand boards, new release. You can find it in uh, sub account settings or in the marketing tab on the right there. And you can get in a couple logos. Uh, you should not have 10 different brand colors, hopefully, but maybe you got five. Usually it's like up to five, I usually see. And then, uh, you know, you get, or it's 10 colors, yeah, up to five fonts. And so, I, I saw it for the simplicity of like, let's say your funnel builder is really good, but you have a different person building emails, just the not the ease of being able to make sure you have consistency. But I see where you're saying where this is actually a potential building block that has massive implications down the line. I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah, and if you, if you look at like when you actually create the board, and th this is why I'm thinking this way, is you guys are like, Matt, what, what makes you think this way? Well, one, I have a lot of conversations, so that's like plays into it. Um, but the brand board itself, they didn't release it as something like shareable. It's internal, like, but there's no link. So you create a brand board, there's nothing like, oh, share this brand board somewhere. It's intended to be an internal resource. And even that, you'd be like, who, who benefits like, if I thought it was going to be shareable for the team primarily, you'd be like, oh, even if it's shareable internally, like, don't you want to email it to them or something like that? And this is like, no, we just need it stored here. Trust us. Like there's, there's going to be another team member that uh, can take all of these, you know, guidelines and, uh, you know, really, really work some magic with them. But I'll, I'll say, so you save the brand boards you got over there. You can't share it. You can't share it publicly. Like, oh, this is a bummer. Maybe if everyone asks for it, they'll add that feature because like, oh, there's another use case. But that that was not the vision here, I don't believe. Um, it does then actually come into play in funnels. I think in funnels and websites and maybe in emails as well. So in the actual editor there, uh, they, and we'll touch on this too, they, they also introduced funnel components and that's, it's really global sections for a sub account is what right. it is. So if you've used global sections, that was great. You could have a common footer. The slightly annoying thing is, is global sections were only per funnel. And so what ended up happening is if you want to be really efficient, you just had like 70 step funnels because you just wanted to always use the same footer, the same header, the same common objects there. And now, because you essentially have global sections for the sub account, you can better divide your funnels by offers and really be like, oh, this is only a two-step or three-step funnel and it all has the common footer there. So you're not having to like, uh, you're not having to like update it in multiple funnels to even yep. have common common sections there. But inside of uh, inside of a funnel builder, the the actual, where does it funnel play Funnel blocks or? Yeah, maybe that's what they're calling them is funnel blocks is is the the piece of it. That's huge because so many people in funnels will make those 70 step things, which makes analytics a little bit harder to track and really understand the function of each funnel. Um, so I love that. I love that ability to, I hope they allow like the ability to move all of the fab icons and scripts and all those things in one click because that, uh, that's another thing when you're building a funnel, it's just an extra step. Yeah. So all, all of these things are, yeah, they're calling it, I guess, pre-built sections. Well, there's cool. global sections, there's pre-built sections, trying to create more common assets across the board. And I think all of these are going to play into not only just leverage for the team, but leverage for AI team members inside of your account, where if, if you have, like you've already done the work of having and defining your footer. So then if you ask AI to build your funnel, it's like, oh, I already know what your footer is. I'm not going to reinvent you know your terms of service i'm not going to try and be creative with things that aren't supposed to be creative like compliance language and and things like that they usually put in the footer there um and so it's going to be super interesting like i said this is the hot take piece of it so right now brand boards that's what's out uh it's not it's actually not incredibly useful day one it's like cool to organize yourself and get it in there but i see this is where it's going is it's going to become one of the building blocks to really expedite your funnel building, your email building, any sort of those digital asset building, and as well as having like a common space of anchored decisions. You change your logo, and now imagine how easy it is to rebrand, where you're like, rebrand, done. And uh, that it's was huge. already possible with custom values, but it was just not always intuitive and in how it played out. We had to like have a placeholder for the logo with a custom value. This will, this will just make it a lot more intuitive and, and just be another value add for folks running inside of high level, whether you're helping other clients do stuff, it'll be easier for them or for yourself. Like definitely for us, like this is something we, we will, we'll be using.
And that's high level hot takes, Matt. You mentioned another podcast. Where else should people be subscribing? Well, marketing with Matt. If you actually, usually it's people know marketing with Matt. They don't know high level hot takes. But if you're over here in the high level space and you want to hear more marketing related stuff, uh, sometimes a little bit longer form conversations happening. We got marketing with. Uh, marketing with Matt. And that actually, I'll say this too. If you're brand new getting started, we have another podcast called Agency Launch, which I've interviewed a number of folks inside of the high level ecosystem. Speci- that is specifically designed for folks who are getting started brand new and use that twist their arm to give you some free stuff. So check out if you like podcasts, you like shows like this, um, or, you know, interview style or longer form or marketing focus. Those are some other places that I, yeah, I can definitely recommend and go check it out.